How's it going? So I just wrapped up on my first day of raids. Yes, it came out today and I basically started as soon as the update went live. And I am uh, burnt out. I did 10 plus hours, like almost non-stop of raids. And yes, I actually completed a few, so that was very nice. But I wanna say one thing before I continue on the video is that raids definitely lived up to its name in terms of like the most difficult PVM challenge that Old School had. So that is really good. So there were two big issues about raids that I had. So yeah, please, please make sure you watch the end and then I'll elaborate on the problem and then uh, we'll go from there. Anyways, enjoy today's video. All right guys, so raids is out and um, I am making my way to the entrance, which is right here. So I think one of the closest teleports we got is the Xerx Talisman to the uh, lookout. So I'm gonna be doing a few attempts now at raids with uh, five other people and we're just gonna try to learn a bit, you know, explore and probably fail the boss a couple times and then hopefully we uh, discover some cool tips and tricks for this raids. So I started off my first ever raids dungeon with uh, the mining room. We had to just mine these guardians to death to get to the next part. So the next room was the agility and minion room. These guys hit super hard, so we basically just hit one of them at a time because they can hit 50 plus if you don't pair against them. So raids dungeons were randomly generated and the dungeons usually consist of like boss rooms and basically skilling rooms and like mini monster rooms where you kill them for like tools or like secondaries for herbs. And then there's always like the final room which is always the same basically of the final boss. So only a few rooms into the first raid we encounter our first boss, Vespula. In fact, you actually encounter quite a bit of bosses per raid. I'd say at least four, maybe five. But anyways, none of the bosses in raids are like, you know, simple bosses where you just take it down in Zero HP and that's it. Um, this boss in particular required quite a bit of mechanics. Uh, there's three main components to Fispula fight that, you know, we arduously experimented to figure out. But yeah, involved the big ass larvae on the ground, uh, the boss itself that's like flying. And also involved a glowing green portal that is quite a bit away from the boss. You actually see it's pretty much glowing green. But essentially we had to make sure the larvae were for HP and we also had to make sure we damaged the actual boss uh, low enough that it would stay on the ground. And we had to keep uh, doing those two things in order to attack the portal. If the boss wasn't down the ground, we can't attack the portal. If the larvae weren't like high HP, we cannot attack the portals or damage it. So what we had to do was get the portal down to zero life points, which took a long ass time because she always flies back up quite fast. So you only have a few, you know, like seconds to really attack the portal, you know, with both the boss down and the larvae at 4 HP. But very challenging boss, took a while to figure it out. So the second boss we encountered right after Fispula was called the Vanguard. And the Vanguard consisted of three different monsters, each having a unique attack. So one did magic, one did range, and one did melee. And this boss was super tricky to kill because we could not actually pile one at a time and you know just take him down one by one. Because it had this mechanic where if one of the monsters had like HP that was like 20% or so different from one of them, then all of the monsters actually heal the full HP. So we had to basically coordinate our damage and split it up among the three bosses equally because if one of us you know, did too much damage to one of them, um, all of them will end up getting healed to full HP and then we have to start over. So yeah, it was a very difficult coordinating our team and our attacks. I'd say this boss would still be challenging if I have to fight it again, especially if I have to go with like another different team, you know, with different members. And the third boss we encountered was like the Mutadial. And this boss obviously had his own gimmicks, but it was a lot easier, okay, by far, compared to the other two we did thus far. Uh, it was very simple, we just had to either make sure the tree that we're cutting called the meat tree is dead, because if it's dead, then the minion that we're fighting right now as you can see and the actual boss which is in the river that's attacking us with fire cannot regenerate its HP okay or we can uh, freeze it but we didn't actually do that method I learned that later on then if you kill the minion or the boss fast enough before it gets to the tree while it's frozen then yeah that's fine too but yeah the boss very high hitting boss and sometimes it does like this stomp attack that has like 60 plus so a few of my uh, teammates got KO'd like out of nowhere 
but yeah not too difficult boss and another crazy thing is you can actually say spot these guys as well if you use like an armadillo crossbow like long range we actually ended up doing that as you can see and yeah it's quite effective it works both for the boss as well i think they might patch it though probably in a few days but yeah i guess use it while you can <laughs> I don't know if you would consider this like a true boss for Raids, but we also had to fight the Ice Demon, and yeah, I got these like twice, but Ice Demon is not too difficult. All we had to do was burn wood, and then all we had to do was just kill it. It was that simple. No uh, crazy mechanics, just get it down to zero. After completing all those bosses and figure out how the hell to kill them, we finally reached the final boss, the Great Ohm, the white dragon looking thing that isn't a dragon. Yeah, him. So the last fight of raids every single time is the Great Alm and my god this boss was very difficult on the first attempt okay of course we didn't really know anything about raids so I guess it's fair to say that it was you know maybe very challenging because we didn't know much about the mechanics but I'd say it would probably still be challenging even if you knew the mechanics because uh, even after like our second attempt you know it wasn't easy getting the kill I mean I still had to die like you know once or twice so yeah it was fair point taken but basically on the first race though oh my lord it was chaos okay this boss had so many so many mechanics so just to name a few it has uh, a lightning attack that deactivates your prayer and it has like a fire wall attack which like prevents you from moving and then he shoots like a fireball at you and it hits like always like a 60 or something it also has a lot of these like crystal spawned and crystal bomb mechanics where if it touches you or is near you you will get hit for a massive amount of damage like 40s he also has another mechanic where he like spawns poison onto one particular uh, person and if we're standing next to that person, we will get poison along with him and the guy had to run around until the poison wear off. And there was another one where it was like poison where instead of poison, it was like falling rocks. And if we're next to that person with the falling rocks, we get hit and he had to run around until, you know, the poison uh, just ran away. And there was this weird tagging system where sometimes you have to be next to your partner. Like it'll decide which partner you are. And if you're not in front of your partner or next to your partner during that time you'll get hit for massive damage so yeah there was quite a few variants of that partner mechanic and also the boss have four stages all right so this fight was motherfucking long all right the first two stages were um kind of tricky because we didn't know like which arm to fight because this boss consisted of uh three different parts so the biggest issue was dodging all of these mechanics to minimize damage and also figuring out how to you know defeat the beast because the great arm has three uh, body parts left right hand and the head and for like the first three phases we had to uh, figure out which way to like best deal with the hand so like which one we had to attack first and whatever and uh, after a while we figure out the first two phases we just had to attack both hands really as much as possible and then the third phase was a bit tricky because we had to get both hands uh, killed about the same time within like a 10 second time frame and we were able to get through that phase similar to the vanguard and then the final phase was uh, you basically go for the head but yeah that shit was a bit tricky because he does like more mechanics shit and you have to dodge more things and he hits quite a bit harder on top and yeah it was a fuck fest but yeah finally managed to kill it after a good like one or two hours man it was very hellish but difficult and quite satisfying once I slayed this beast so my reward for all this was quite disappointing guys I did get something that like you know you normally wouldn't see it was a dark journal but it was just uh, a lore book that's it it was just to emerge itself in the history and uh, yeah my reward was probably less than like 20k GP yep no bullshit man 20k GP so after spending four hours in that miserable raid, it was fun by the way, I refined the inventory. Turns out Dragonfire Shield is like pointless. Um, honestly, full offense is the way to go as far as the main boss is concerned. Pretty sure you're going to be fighting the main boss every single raid. Hard on offensive magic and hard on offensive accuracy. Melee is like where it's at, but yeah, something like this is probably going to be uh, pretty decent. Let me see what I get, man. I only got 5k, dude. Damn, I got 6 Renard Weeds and 21 Rubies, man. That's so bad. 
So using our knowledge that we gained from the first raids, we managed to, you know, do the second raid a bit easier and we managed to do it a lot faster as well. Went from like four hours to two hours. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe ideally we can get it down to one hour if we keep uh, doing raids and that will be like yeah, optimal. But yeah, I didn't manage to get any of the newer bosses, but we went for the third raid attempt and we managed to actually see the remaining two bosses that we didn't see, which was Tekton and the mage rock guy his name is fast or something it's really a uh, weird name but anyways tecton wasn't anything too crazy to be honest like it didn't have any like moves that you know would want to KO you or hit like 50 plus so we actually did not complete our third raid because the next boss that we encountered which we haven't fought yet decimated us okay he literally uh, killed us the moment he spawned i'm not even kidding just look at this clip and because we died so early because of him, we lost so many points, which greatly affects the reward. So like that raid was a bust anyway, so we just gave up. So currently, the only boss that I haven't killed yet at raids is Fasa, but probably the next time I go to raids, I'll probably uh, finish that off now that I know a bit more on how to kill it. So my main problem with raids isn't really with raids, but with how Iron Man works in raids. So Iron Man rules fully apply and that really sucks because trading and being able to pick up other people's drops whether like they might have died and you might want to use like their leftover supplies in a boss room is super crucial and being an Iron Man I can't do any of that so I'm actually a hindrance to the overall rates like performance just because of the fact that I can't trade. So like, let's say um, one of my friends is making potions for us. Well, guess what? I have to make my own. Even if he is super efficient at making all these potions or like fishing all the food, well, I have to do all that myself. So that just means I also have to spend time doing that thing when he could have done all of it for everyone had I not been an Iron Man. I don't know if you guys get it, but overall, the big idea is that I actually become a detriment to the uh, raids team. I actually slow down the race team so that is only one of many problems that an iron man unfortunately causes for a race team for example when i was fighting uh the great alm right so when we die all the raid stuff that you made is dropped on the ground so like if you have food and stuff it'll be on the ground and it'll stay there and that's good because normal players what they can do is they can go right back into the boss room just pick up the food and continue the fight now for me it's a different story because once i die and I want to go rushing into the boss to fight again. I can't because I can't pick up any of the food that's on the ground. So that means I got to be like, all right, guys, you guys do the fighting. I'll be back in five minutes because I got to, you know, collect all the food and stuff again to go in. So that means we're down another person. So if I was a normal count, I could have just went right in with them too. So I really do slow down the boss fight, unfortunately. So the main idea that you guys need to understand is that I'm actually a detriment to the overall raids team. So with that being said, I won't be doing raids on the Iron Man no more. I hope you guys understand. So I still want to continue raids because it's still really fun. And I really want to get a rare drop just because that will be so awesome as like a personal milestone. But I want to make it more fair for a future race team. So I'll be doing it on my main account, Asian Rice Cup. So I have not made videos on Asian Rice Cup in a very long time. So that's like where the you know channel name came from. So I will still be delivering raids content probably as promised for this week and the schedule will basically be the same you know the normal Iron Man will return when the hardcore dies and the hardcore will be obviously returning after the raids. So I haven't really uh, shown my main character really at all so I'll just give a brief overview. So it's got pretty well rounded stats of course on the PVM side so I'll be fine for raids. And also in terms of gear, it's got pretty much all the equipment I need for raids as well. So if plan A doesn't work, we got plan B. So this will be a much more enjoyable raid for sure on the main account. So I couldn't have done raids without my friends that invited me. So thanks to WAF Gaming, Loso Gamers, um, Ninja, and uh, PJ for inviting me to their team. So I'll probably be doing raids with them again in the next few days. So these guys are awesome people, so definitely check them out. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys soon with another video in a few days, guys. Take care.